guess, speaking about is we're going to be dealing with inverse <laughs> operations. All right, we're going to be dealing with inverse operations with our trigonometric. <laughs> but I want to make sure that I kind of cover a little bit of a review of inverse operations so that we can kind of get an idea of how we're going to apply them to the trigonometric functions. So the first thing is let's kind of step back into Algebra 1 when we were looking into solving for an equation. Well, for solving for an equation, what we use is inverse operations um, to isolate the variable that we were trying to solve for. So in this problem, we had x plus 1 equals 5. And if you kind of remember, what we want to do is isolate the variable, get the x by itself. So what we did is use the inverse operation, which pretty much means the operation that's going to undo what's happening to the variable. So since my x is being added by 1, I have to use the inverse operation, which would be subtracting, right? Because if you add 1 and subtract 1, that these kind of undo each other. So we called subtraction the inverse operation of addition. And that's vice versa as well. Subtraction is also the inverse operation. Yeah, definitely before, wasn't it? I was uh, thinking five. There we go. So then we'll go ahead and look at um, multiplication. So we can see here that my variable now is being multiplied by 4. Um, so the inverse operation of multiplication is now going to be division. So what we did was to isolate the variable. We divided by 4 using the division property of equality to get our answer 4. Then we started working with a little bit more besides our basic 4 functions. Then we looked at something where we had squaring. And remember, again, we're still applying, a, uh, we're still applying an operation of squaring. So we look at the inverse operation of squaring, and we say, OK, well, the inverse operation of squaring, remember, is square root. So you square root both sides. And remember, we got x equals plus or minus 5. Because remember, when introducing the square root, I kept, I've been, since day one, I've been going, talking to you guys about this, you have to make sure you include both solutions the positive 5 and negative 5. Then, and now we can say, all right, well, kind of following these rules, what is going to be the inverse operation of and from the beginning? Calculators, a lot of you always wanted to use like the, the cosecant as uh, that inverse operation on your calculator. But remember, the cosecant is not the inverse operation. It is the reciprocal, um, reciprocal function of sine. It is not the inverse operation. So what we need to do is we need to come up, Lily, with a inverse operation that's going to undo sine. And exactly what that's going to do is call inverse sine. Or, sorry, we can rewrite this now as theta equals inverse sine of 1 half, or we could say theta equals arc sine of 1 half. It's the exact same thing. It just means that you're just taking the inverse operation. All right? Now, for this example, let's go and says is sine of an angle, theta, equals 1 half. So let's go and take a look and see when does the sine of theta equal 1 half. So if we were to go back to our unit circle, right, what we need to do is kind of determine when our graph is going to equal 1 half. So hopefully you guys remember we kind of have our three points here, three major points. The first one is square root of 3 divided by 2 comma 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2, and then 1 half, comma, square root of 3 divided by 2. Right? Now remember, what does the sine value represent? Remember what the sine value is? Coordinate point in the inner circle? Why, right? So out of these three points, when what angle? Right, which is pi over 6. So you could say that theta equals pi over 6. Now, there does come a little bit confusing point with this because, and we're going to talk about this later, some of you might say, well, pi or, or pi over 6 is not the only angle where sine equals 1 half, right? Because what about this angle over here, which is 5 pi over 6? At 5 pi over 6, a y is also equal to 1 half. So then you might think, oh, well, the inverse sine then is kind of similar to the inverse sine of uh, your square root, right, where you're going to have two answers pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But however, before you guys actually start writing that down, 
Um, 5 pi r6 is not going to be in the inverse uh, for your sine of, um, or inverse sine of 1 half. All right, we're going to explain a little bit the reason why. But the only answer right now that we're going to have for the inverse sine of 1 half is just going to be pi over 6. All right, and the reason why is it has to fall within the range of the function, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay?